It's time for another WrestlePlanet News update. As AEW file an Owen Hart related trademark, we have the backstage reaction to Bray Wyatt's release from WWE, and Adam Cole's WWE contract is set to expire. All that and more coming up in today's video, but first... In a recent news video, we discussed how plans had changed for the AEW All Out main event, which was originally going to see Hangman Page take on Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship. According to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, this is no longer the case, following Hangman and the Dark Order's loss to the Elite on Dynamite last week. Page's quest for the world title looks set to be put on hold, with many expecting him to become the new champion at the next pay-per-view, two years after his last title shot in the first AEW World Championship match against Chris Jericho, where of course he lost. The feud between Omega and Hangman has been building ever since their days in the Elite, where they became tag team champions before Omega's betrayal. It all seemed to be coming to head at All Out two years after Page's loss to Jericho. Not only is this match not happening, but it seems he's not going to be at All Out at all, with Meltzer and his Wrestling Observer Radio co-host Brian Alvarez discussing the topic on Saturday night, where they reported Page wasn't even going to be on the card. This does seem like a strange decision considering the momentum behind Hangman right now and it will be tough to rebuild it to the same level if his push is cooled off. Over the past couple of weeks, the wrestling world has been talking about CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, who were said to be heading to All Elite Wrestling. On AEW Dynamite last week, there were several references to Punk's appearance, with him expected to debut at AEW Rampage, the first dance special on August 20th. The event was made official on Dynamite, and immediately after the announcement, Darby Allen cut a promo backstage and made a clear reference to CM Punk and said... I'll be in Chicago. You know, I've been around a lot of men in this world that have laid claim to how they're the greatest. There's only one place to really prove that, right here, in AEW, even if you think you're the best in the world. Of course, CM Punk used to call himself the best in the world during his days in WWE, which led many people to think that Darby's promo was directed at Punk. Darby Allen has since claimed that this is not the case, instead saying it was aimed towards Sammy Guevara. When asked about it, Darby said, No, that's more Sammy Guevara we were alluding to, because he calls himself the best ever. Yeah, well, people read into it too much. Sammy Guevara, he calls himself the best ever, so it's cool, dude. It's awesome that people actually care and want to know what's going on. Obviously, I think we can all agree that this is complete nonsense, with Darby simply not wanting to give anything away, since he's not even in a feud with Guevara, who is now a babyface. The show saw many other CM Punk references, basically telling fans Punk is signed without telling them that he's signed, in order to sell out the United Center later this month. If Punk isn't there, expect a full-blown riot from fans. And quickly, just before we continue, make sure you scroll down and drop a like and subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss any upcoming wrestling content as we head towards 20,000 subscribers. But now that you've done that, let's get on with the rest of the video. The reigning AEW World Tag Team Champions have got the internet talking this week after proclaiming that they will eventually have a match with WWE's New Day. Over the past few months, the Young Bucks have been regularly changing their Twitter bio to something different almost every day it seems, and the latest change read, One day we'll wrestle New Day and everyone will rejoice. Remember this bio. This is reminiscent of tweets from both the Young Bucks and FTR, then known as The Revival, who posted something almost identical to this. The New Day and the Elite have a long-running friendly rivalry stretching back to before AEW even began, with Kenny Omega often interacting with fellow gamer Xavier Woods. The Young Bucks and Omega even took on Kofi Kingston, Big E and Woods in a Street Fighter Best of Three tournament in 2018 at an E3 convention in Los Angeles, with the New Day coming away with the victory. The Bucks have said in the past that the match was close to happening, likely during their talks to join WWE before they chose AEW. It's likely either side would need to change promotion for this to happen, with either the Bucks jumping to WWE or the New Day jumping to AEW, unless some kind of working relationship can be made. Kenny Omega himself has stated his desire for AEW and WWE to work together, but right now this seems very unlikely. I guess we'll have to see what the future holds. 
On July 28th, AEW filed for an interesting trademark which seems to refer to the late great Owen Hart. The term King of Hearts, which was the nickname of Owen, was applied for by AEW for use for education and entertainment services. This has led to many thinking AEW could be set to work with Owen's widow Martha Hart for some kind of tribute. Martha famously refused to work with WWE and holds them responsible for his death at the Over the Edge pay-per-view in 1999. At the show, Owen was set to be lowered to the ring from the top of the arena via a harness and grapple line, but the wrong equipment was used which led to Hart falling to his death. Since then, Martha has understandably refused to let WWE profit off her late husband's name, with them not being allowed to use his likeness in their toy lines, video games, and Hall of Fame. Former AEW World Champion Chris Jericho spoke with Sports Kida in September 2020 and stated that he'd like AEW to work with Martha to honor Owen and said, I'd love to see Martha do something with AEW. I think the spirit of Owen Hart lives on in AEW for sure. I'm a huge disciple of him. I'm very much influenced by Owen Hart. So I think that whether it's New Japan or AEW, I think it's important for Owen to be remembered by his fans and by the people that he influenced, myself included. Only time will tell exactly what this trademark leads to, with AEW potentially set to pay tribute to the King of Hearts. According to Fightful, people backstage in WWE have not taken the release of Bray Wyatt well at all, with roster members and staff being frustrated with the decision. The report states that nearly 20 individuals within the company have reached out to Fightful directly, and many long-term stars now feel like their jobs are not safe despite their positions on the card or prior pushes. Talent were told Wyatt's release was due to budget cuts, but many feel there is more to it than that. Wyatt, and more specifically his fiend the character was a huge merch seller and was the Universal Champion very recently. To call it budget cuts seems a little strange since they're likely profiting rather than losing. This means no matter how successful you are, you could well be the next on the chopping block and backstage morale has taken a hit following his release. Many from around the wrestling space have took to Twitter to give their thoughts on Wyatt's release, with Mickey James summing up his run with the company perfectly by saying, I think what you meant to say was, thank you so much for coming up with such an incredible gimmick time and time again, one so cool and over, we didn't know how to book it right. So we just gave it to someone else so we can still make all the money off it and let you go. WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley had a lot of praise for Wyatt and he said, with WWE's release of Bray Wyatt, the company has lost a true visionary and a creative genius, one of the most innovative makers of mayhem pro wrestling has ever seen. Here's hoping Bray finds happiness and recreates himself once again, in wrestling, in life, or both. His former Wyatt family follower Braun Strowman had three words for his former leader and he said, Brother, I'm waiting. Strowman himself was released from the company recently, and perhaps we could be seeing a reunion somewhere down the line, with Wyatt family member Eric Rowan also being a free agent. And finally, we have a report from Fightful that states NXT's Adam Cole could be set to become a free agent, with his contract set to expire very soon. Higher-ups in the company assumed that his contract expired in December, but this is not the case. They got it wrong, and they were surprised to find out that his deal in fact ended in July, but after the recent Great American Bash, he agreed to work through to SummerSlam weekend whilst re-evaluating his situation. It has not been confirmed if this is a verbal agreement or a short contract extension. In a recent WWE AEW Jumps prediction video, we discussed Adam Cole's contract being up in and around January next year, which is close to the December date WWE themselves believed, but it seems he could be making that jump sooner if that's what he chooses to do. We did later do a video about contracts that were set to expire this year, but it had been reported that he's since re-signed, which kept him off that list, but feel free to check out both those videos if you have the time. But anyway, Cole has a history with many in AEW, as during his time in Bullet Club, he was a regular feature on the Being the Elite YouTube show before eventually being killed off when he was signed with NXT in 2017. Not only is AEW full of Cole's close friends, but his girlfriend Britt Baker is also currently the AEW Women's Champion. With Cole reluctant to sign a long-term extension, his status is very much up in the air right now and could well be a free agent by the 
end of this month. With him agreeing to work until SummerSlam weekend, it can be assumed that he has a match on NXT TakeOver 36 that same weekend, which could well be his last for the company. And before you go, why not check out my video where I discuss 5 ways that AEW could book the debut of CM Punk.